write it in. No, let's not get this twisted. Eh? I'm really not busy. I'm trying to take this one step at a time so I can reflect. I may need this information myself. Who knows in the future for quick reference. But however, if I'm working on like things like 12 volt batteries, systems, I try and get about 7 ohms minimum on my coils, you know. That's important. So my meter don't just drop like a rock. Okay? If you get 12 ohms, it's even better. You're going to be more efficient. But if you get a minimum of 7, you're good. If you get like 4 volt, 4 ohms, if you get 4 ohms, after winding your coils, but you have them in series, 4 and 4 is 8. It's still in the ballpark. Okay? So, however, I got 7 ohms on both coils. So when I'm making series tests, 7 plus 7 ohms equals 14. Smooth sailing, even better for me. Too much ohms, your motor lose a lot of power. And you won't get too much mechanical strength, especially if your diameter is too small. And I mostly build pulse motor for mechanical work. Don't get me wrong, I'm building this motor, but it's really not for back EMF experiments. If you want back EMF experiments, you should go and see some people doing back EMF experiments. But I'm going to touch up on the matter. Because it's all good. In the future. Today, we are dealing with resistance. Okay? Now, this motor I'm building it's for my personal use because I have plans for this motor. I want to see how minimalist you can build this motor and still have mechanical strength to do certain things, which I have plans to do with this motor. Okay? I'm not going to be charging batteries, back EMF, not even with the generator coil I build as it is. I build these features because I want to play around with them. Okay? Pass some time. But really, I will strongly be adding probably some sort of generator somewhere on the motor. And the rest of the stuff I have to do with it, I'm saving it for later. I must affirm the the results first so for now i've just done i'm just done building my two coils set the circuit in place and i give it some sort of victorian you know something to reminisce on the good old 70s 1700s kind of like if they could hear me down there Kind of like a homage to a good old scientist back in the days. Researchers. If you research certain things, like uh, the old school motors, you see they had them on some nice pieces of wood. You know, they look beautiful. So, resistant in what, you ask? Well, in your spool, of course, your coils. Sometimes I build machines with like three coils in series. So if I'm trying to tag it around 12 ohms, I try and place like 4 ohms on each of the coils. For example, I'm building motors in phase. I'll have two phase motors, three phase motors. Each of the phase, if they have three coils, and I want, I'm targeting like 12 ohms per phase, I'm going to separate each coil into 4 ohms separations, okay? Resistance is important when you're building pulse motors. Very important. The motor will work with low resistance, 
but it won't be efficient it won't run as long as an efficient pulse motor if you look at the old school videos of people building these things notice this thick huge spools they have these things has a lot of resistance however you can have this resistance if you build in smaller machines you just have to use smaller gauge coils you're not going to use a small spool and wind huge gauge on the spool you are not going to get the resistance required the resistance is going to be too low you, you must adjust the gauge of wire you use to wind a spool according to the size of the spool if you're going to use one coil in a project you, you, you better try and get all the resistance you need on this one coil if you're going to use numerous coils then you can get away with bigger gauges because you can spread your resistance on all these different spools of course if you have three coils in series they must be striking three magnets at the same time you need your compass protractor to build devices like this you can just put magnets and coils anywhere in any position okay so let's get down to other things Okay, now I'm running the coil in series, start of this coil is on start run on the circuit, it end run is on the start of the other coil which means the end of the other coil is on the end run on the circuit, okay, so now I'm consuming even less energy because with these two coils in series, I have a high resistance. Smooth sailing. I can also put the resistor, the resistance of the two triggers in series and have a higher voltage with less amps across the trigger coil also. The generator coil can be placed in series also. nuts I just have to follow the same routine the end of this coil has to go on the start meaning the knotted side of the other coil so my end trigger on this side would have to go on the knotted trigger on the other side as well 
generator. So I have to build an SSG for this circuit. I'm running it with a half, half wave bipolar circuit. Half wave. But basically I'm just going to run it for SSG. Just testing both coils. Now we're going to run the motor in parallel. You see why I don't run it in parallel like this. Because it's going to drop my resistance too low. I'm at 7 ohms on each coil. In series I have 14 ohms. If I'm running each of the circuits with uh, uh, SSG, of these coils, it's better than just putting the both in parallel. I'm going to run it with one SSG because I'm going to run the two of the, the coils in series. But I'm going to show why you don't put it in parallel. Now observe the, observe the voltage. It's really stick in there. That's how I believe the pulse motor should run. voltage is really just sticking in place it's not dropping quick but let's let's try it in parallel which means my resistance will be between would be under se 7 ohms and I like running my motors between 7 and 12 ohms per coil I'm going to show you an example of why in pulse motors you need high resistance. Alright, so I have both stats. See? This call is noted. This call is noted. On the stat run, I have non knotted coils on the end run. I'm using one trigger, this trigger, and you can place the both triggers in parallel also. But notice when the resistor, the resistance drop, what's going to happen to the meter? One coil I was running at 12.3 volts. The coils in series I was running at 12.40 volts. But you can also notice the motor has more power in parallel. Now I'm running around 12. 14 and dropping 12 17 so the more power you want the less resistance you're going to place on your coils okay so the more power you want from your motor you are going to put less resistance but I don't like running like this so in order for my motor to still have power with more resistance on the coils I just make my motors with bigger diameters okay bigger diameters okay so I can still the motor can still do work I can drive a pump okay It can drive a generator, it can drive an air pump, etc. If you have a smaller diameter, you're going to put more resistance, less resistance, excuse me, less resistance on your coil. So you can gain power. So you can your motor can do work. It's up to you. I personally prefer more resistance so my motor is more efficient with bigger diameter motors okay and AFP connects is out <laughs>